Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. It's time for another Starcraft Brood War replay. We've got Flash down here in the bottom left hand corner. Rich in the top left. Been getting a ton of Flash replays recently. And I've actually been banking up some Rich replays. Uh, there was like three uh, maybe a week or two ago in September. And then there was a couple more just recently here in October. So we're just going to go through all five of them today and uh, see what we get. I mean, you ne you're never quite sure which flash we're going to get. Are we going to, you know, get the well-polished, um, very uh, new meta type flash? Or are we going to get the experimental kind of crazy uh, and uh, forward thinking flash from the latter. It's, uh, it's a little bit of a toss up. If he starts going for, you know, five factory plus one timings, then we know what he's interested in. He's just interested in practicing that new style. If we see some crazy builds out of him, if we see him going for uh, fast command centers into, uh, you know, quick upgrade builds where he's trying to balance that old school upgrade style with the uh, defense against these newer style uh, robotics drop builds, then, you know, we might end up seeing Flash get, uh, get pounded on and uh, put in his place. Otherwise, I think he should be able to take down Rich here. Uh, Rich is going to open up with a Nexus first. That's been spotted. Let's see Flash's reaction to Nexus first. I'm always interested to see uh, the different takes on how to deal with this build from our different Terran players. He does start a Marine. Now, I think if he was just going to build a CC here immediately, I don't think we would see that Marine being started. So it's pretty likely that we're going to get some sort of crazy aggression. And a second SCV being sent across the map is going to confirm that. Marines are coming out. Some SCVs are being pulled. Just four though. Only four are being sent across to join the one that is here. And he's actually going to bunker push from quite a long distance away. This is outside the vision range of Rich. He doesn't know about this uh, bunker here just yet. He's going to see it now with the Nexus warping in. The Nexus range, the vision range on the Nexus is very good. Going to start a second bunker here. Does lose one SCV immediately. But it has those three extra SCVs to kind of help him out now. We'll be getting the second bunker down and... Pushing up onto this Nexus. He starts his own CC back at home as soon as possible. And this is a very low commitment from Flash. A lot of times you'll see, you know, eight or so SCVs pulled off the line. Maybe a little bit less just to guarantee the kill on this Nexus. But he built two bunkers. He only poured, pulled four SCVs though. And he's got the command center going pretty darn quick. I think this is an interesting adaptation and uh, switch up from the traditional way we've seen Terran players deal with this build. He's going to go ahead and kill the Nexus and he's pretty much dead even on workers here. Just two workers behind, which should be fixed here shortly by the uh, command center, the second command center coming online. Factory is going to start. Is this the new best way to deal with Command Center first? It seems really strong. There didn't seem to be much counterplay for Rich. The bunker was out of range of the Nexus. The first bunker is out of the range of the Nexus. It wasn't able to be spotted by probes. He managed to finish that up and then does the bunker push really effectively here. Getting in on top of that Nexus and dealing with it without pulling too many SCVs. And I would say he's pretty far ahead at this point. Two factories on the way. Going to pull one Marine out of this bunker. Range is just about done, but it's still going to be some time before he can start his Nexus. And 
Well, these bunkers are going to buy quite a bit of time for Flash. Well, he puts a, sets up a bunker back at home and gets his first tank out. I really like this build. I feel like this is a great response. Is it going to take Flash? Maybe that's what we need is Flash to come in and let us all know to are exactly what's the best way to deal with the Nexus first build. Well, this is a pretty good move. Goes ahead and drops a Nexus out on the map. The scouting probe that was over in Flash's base a moment ago. Coming back to set up a Nexus. You're definitely going to go for the double Nexus anyway, but just getting it out a little bit quicker is a good idea. He's got Siege Mode on the way. Flash does with a tank on the way out. There are four Dragoons coming up to the front. So it's a little bit dangerous. If you send the tank down the ramp, you could be in a bit of trouble. So hopefully he won't uh, get too frisky with this tank. Try to uh, get some damage on these dragoons or anything. Just stay up here on the high ground, most likely, and wait for that siege mode to finish up. You now the repair does cost a little bit of money, but it's not the biggest deal in the whole world. And he even pulled two extra SCVs just to make sure that he had those two ready. Knowing that there's two gateways back at home, there could be two Dragoons coming right behind this. And if the two Dragoons suddenly show up and start hitting the bunker, you might might lose it if the SCVs don't pull off the line in time and get over to the bunker for that repair. So he's just being extra safe. He's got the missile turret here at the natural. He's got the double factory pumping away. I like it. I really like it. Solid, solid uh, response to the Nexus first. If you guys are Terran players and you've been struggling with this build, if you've been trying the uh, traditional response of, you know, waiting for a vulture, bringing a whole bunch of Marines and, you know, pulling like seven, eight SCVs to try and kill that Nexus, maybe this is going to be your answer. You can try this out on the ladder and see if it works for you against Nexus first. It feels very, very good, and it didn't seem like it had a lot of counterplay there for Rich. Maybe that was because he didn't have two gateways after Nexus first. He went one gateway. But I'm not sure that the Zealots would have gotten out in time to even do much about it had he gone for double gateway. Two more factories going to come online. And this is just feeling like a super modern build here for Fla from Flash, meant to end this game. I think he just wants to add on possibly one more factory, maybe even two more, and just go for the closer. Yeah, here we go. One, and here comes the second. We're going to go to six factory, and he's just going to try to solidly close this out. I think we're going to see... That patented double floating building at the front of this push as well. Gonna float the engineering bay and the barracks in front of the army to really solidify the position and close the close the game out. It's so strong. Look at how many tanks he's banked. This is very uh Mihu-esque. The number of tanks that he's building right now and is continuing to build. He's gonna build a couple of Goliaths. I don't know how many he will uh, opt for here. I don't believe he has a Goliath range. I didn't see that on the way. He's optimizing his build for as many tanks as is possible. You can see the number here is kind of crazy. We've already got uh, 10 tanks finished and ready to fight. We're going to start to move forward with just two Goliaths. Everything else is Vultures. Four Vultures at a time. He may even switch this over to, to Vulture production as well. He's moving out slowly. Doesn't want to take a bad fight here to start things off. And even get some free volleys on these Dragoons, which is amazing. Just shaving off a bit of their shields. A little bit of their health before the full-on engagement is great this is a lot of gateways you know what one two three four five six seven eight gates and a reaver is a pretty good amount to try and deal with this six factory push is or was the damage 
that was done early on in this game by Flash enough to give him a strong enough advantage to overcome the gateway spam that's coming here from Rich. Rich is going to drop a Reaver out here in the front, try to sandbag this push a little bit. Does get a shot off on the Goliath, which is great. Only one Goliath remains. That's the only anti-air in this army right now. The... Uh, uh, dude, these supplies are looking insanely close 123 to 146 this is a really rough spot for rich to be in here comes the zealots they don't even have speed this is spell zealot speed's not going to finish here the tanks really do need to target onto these dragoons or the reaver zealots getting right on top of this i think that rich may actually hold this push kind of crazy that he's going to be able to win this, but I think he pushes everything back. There's only two tanks remaining. One of them is really low. He targets the low one finally. Going to eat some mine hits here, but there's only one tank left. He even brought the double building, but wasn't able to push through for the win. Now Zealot's coming out in reinforcement. Is he going to be able to run through? Pull some mines here. Onto this tank. Kills a bunch of vultures there and will finish off the tank. Really, really well done. Now Flash is going to have to go to plan B. It'll have to be that third base going up on his side of the map. This was meant to kill. And truly, it should have gone better for Flash. But it seems like he hasn't quite dialed that in. Or Rich was just so well timed with the way he was moving his zealots. It felt like right as everything was sieging up, the Zealots were already closing in on the position and were able to get on top of everything just as they were finishing that siege. Maybe a bit of a mistake there from Flash. Uh, taking it, not taking it slow enough maybe in the way that he was pushing out to try and uh, take over this high ground area. If he gets on top of that high ground with... Uh, that good of a push and all the six factories rallying across the map. It's going to be very hard to stop. Really, truly difficult to stop that push. Now, I think we lost the eBay and the barracks. So he's building a new barracks back at home. He's built a new eBay back at home. That's the, the problem with sending those two floating buildings across the map as you go for the push. Is overwhelming with vultures right now, but more dragons are going to come up here and shove these back. There's a very low tank count. Remember, this is like 12 tanks that went across the map. We're not going to reach a pushing number here for quite some time. The way that this game has gone, it's going to give a lot of time for Rich to move out on the map and potentially take a fifth base as well as his fourth. Meanwhile, Flash is going to take his fourth center left. An interesting decision uh, considering how few tanks he has and how split up he's going to have to be in his defense if Rich is allowed to go on the offense. If he keeps him busy with vultures everywhere, maybe Flash doesn't need to worry about an attack for a while and can build up that tank count a little bit more, but it feels like Rich is closing in on the position. He's moving everything forward he's clearing out mines he's got a big supply advantage he's 50 supply ahead and he's got a huge amount of zealots ready to fight this flash is gonna have to be in perfect position when this attack eventually comes in or he is just gonna get broken wide open there's no anti-air here on the high ground for the fourth base just yet if these shuttles come into that high ground and bomb all over these tanks it's going to be very difficult for flash to stay alive through that or to keep that base alive he is rotating the tanks over here towards this high ground uh, at the mineral only as the army is coming forward so that's actually very very good but i don't know if he has enough here to to stop this gg is called flash just taps out what an incredible hold there by rich i just want to go back for a moment and take a look at that fight one more time and just try to figure out exactly what went wrong because this was looking so good look at how many tanks we have here we've got 12 i think we've actually got more than that 13 and there should be one more coming i actually don't see it just 13 tanks here just 13 tank 13 tanks we've got plus one 
What do we have for upgrades on the Protoss army? Nothing. We do not have speed. We've got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 Dragoons. The double floating building. The ominous floating barracks and eBay coming across the map. The Reaver shots were pretty good, but they weren't amazing. It's not like he was killing a bunch of tanks as they were coming forward. But this engagement, as he's coming up the ramp, was insane. It felt like Flash maybe just didn't quite respect it well enough. He's leapfrogging really quickly forward here, and Rich pulls the trigger at the perfect time. He starts to come forward here. We get the shot from the Reaver. Oh, no, actually, he just baits the tank shots and picks up the Reaver. The Zealots come in from the side. They are not fast, obviously. They don't have that Zealot speed, but look at how clumped up the tanks are here at the front. And a bunch of them are in the process of sieging up. We've got one, two, three, four, five tanks that are sieging as the Zealots are walking up on top of this. Big volley of tank fire here at the front, de dealing a lot of splash damage to these tanks. Targets onto the Reavers, but or onto the Dragoons, but now the Reaver pops out and starts to add on that damage. A very nice shot there on the tank. The front line of tanks is gone. The back line of tanks is all that remains, and we were just so quickly dropping in tank count. Like four tanks remain. That's crazy. That is wild. Seven tanks just exploded there at the front line, and we've still got a really reasonable uh, amount of dragoons here. The zealots are drying up, but with the reinforcements coming in and speed finishing up, he easily cleans this. Really well played by Ridge. We'll talk a little bit more about him in game number two, but let's jump right in. So as we're getting into this game number two, big respect to Ridge taking on Flash in maybe his strongest form. He's playing a completely standard has a really good opener a very solid opener uh, has an insane supply with his very well timed attack and rich somehow managing to bowl that over just a small mistake from flash completely taken advantage of by this guy right here rich is an ACS level player he got second place in ACS if you don't know what that is, that's the Africa Challenger series. It's four players who haven't yet made it into the ASL. Uh, the most recent winner of that was Quickly. You know, we talk about him a lot on the channel. So anyone who is doing well in the ACS is in the conversation for who will be uh, on the come up for who will be you know, those next great players in the scene. Uh, he hasn't won a lot of money thus far. He's uh, not participated in a ton of different events, but he plays a lot of ladder games and he is gunning for those top spots. He's working towards uh, becoming uh, another Protoss beast like Quickly, like Motive. These guys who have been getting into ASL recently who have been... Well, Quickly hasn't made it into the ASL, but Motive has... These guys who are ASL hopefuls and who can challenge the best players in the world. Rich is moving in that direction and he's shown us one great game already. Let's see if he can continue this streak against Flash because you know that Flash, he realizes his mistake. I'm sure that he analyzed that most uh, recent game. He analyzed that replay, figured out went run what went wrong there. And it definitely wasn't his opener. It definitely wasn't his build. It was simply his execution. And usually those type of replays are the easiest to shake off, in my personal opinion. Like if you can identify one moment where you're like, okay, I, I kind of messed that up. I messed up my execution. Uh, the theory was good, the game knowledge was good, 
uh, everything was good. Just the way that I pulled off the build or the way that I took that one fight uh, was a little bit wrong. That tends to be a little bit more motivating, a little bit easier to accept and move forward from and learn from. So Flash here. He's going to scout the Nexus, but he also sees that there's a Dragoon out already. It's a one gate build. Rich doesn't want to get in the same situation as he did last time. It was pretty clear that he was behind after the opener that Flash showed. In this game, Flash decided to go for gas, get 100, and then set down his uh, command center, and then immediately get his factory. So this is an interesting build. It's kind of a hybrid of a one factory expand and a gas as fast expand because you want to get the uh, CC before your factory but you're still going to get gas before your CC. So it's a little bit of an interesting build. I'm not sure what the exact benefits and negatives of this are. I'm not a Terran player. Uh, I don't play a lot of TVP. Honestly, have a hard time understanding this matchup. It's the reason why I gave up on Terran. I played Terran for a long time, never made it out of C rank. It was just such a bother playing against Protoss seriously i wanted to stand some sort of a chance and feel like i had some opportunities to kill a protoss player so that's why i switched to zerg it's really funny to me uh, how many protoss players will complain about zvp when it's not even that bad it's it's kind of crazy to me um maybe it's just because the contrast between Protoss versus Terran and Protoss versus Zerg is so stark. Like Protoss versus Terran, the Terran makes one mistake and they're just dead. And you can make, you know, four, five, six mistakes as Protoss. And you can still come back if the Terran messes up. If they make any mistakes, you can still easily come back, you know? Uh, a mine drag goes into a clump of tanks or uh, they move a little bit uh, awkwardly with their tanks and... Uh, you know, or a DT gets into a, a certain area, uh, gets on top of the units. Maybe there's a, a slow scan going up against a Reaver, something, or going up against a, an Arbiter. Or maybe they just don't attack on time and you just switch into Carrier. There's a lot of different ways to make comebacks uh, work as the Protoss player. There's almost no way to make comebacks as the Terran player, though, I feel. Uh, if you get a little bit behind, the Protoss player can just run away with the game so quickly. Uh, whereas, if you're playing as a Zerg player, Zerg versus Protoss, there are a few ways that you can make co uh, comebacks as Zerg. There are a few tricks that you can pull out. You know, you could just go straight into Mutas. You could just go ahead and pull out uh, a Hydra build. Try to bust. Try to do something crazy. But I'm kind of missing this game, guys. There's so much damage going on right now. It is insane. So we have the drop come through. That killed a few probes. Drop into the main with two vultures. That killed a few probes in the main as well. And then Rich failed to close this entrance with a building or with the Dragoon. And so a few more vultures slipped in after these ones died. And managed to snipe some probes here in the natural as well. So again, we've got Flash in a massive lead. A massive lead. This time, even bigger than the last. Double Stargate back at home. Fleet Beacon on the way. He's just going to try to go Carrier off of two base. Rich, he's going for a Hail Mary. He's going for one of those builds I was just talking about. Where it's like, well, maybe you just don't build anti-air. And uh, I get six Carriers. And then, uh, yeah, maybe I can win. There's, there's always that possibility, right? Um... Oh gosh, is he going to let more vultures in? I really hope not. Rich, please, buddy. Send out a probe. There we go. Does make that. Uh, pylon there in the wall. Or maybe a Reaver can do a whole bunch of damage. You know, maybe he drops a Reaver in here. It kills like 10 SCVs. That's always a possibility as well. SCVs here at the front. Getting ready to block this desperate counterattack here. Um, definitely need to target some of these SCVs at the front. There we go. That's a big shot. Um, if he had shot that tank, it would have been great. He does go after the tank in, uh, with the second shot or the third shot there. 
could maybe pick off the tank on the high ground as well. Zealot is going to come forward here. A lot of dragons are going down, though. Oh, he's missing too many shots. Too many shots get missed. And he loses basically everything. Drop on this side of the map. Looks like it's cleaning up even more probes. Oh, boy. Rich is in a huge amount of trouble. He let the pylon finish here at the front as well. He lost all of his army. I think this is just about all she wrote for Rich. It would be an incredible comeback if he managed to make it work from here. The drop play turns out to be the right choice against this ACS player. He definitely wasn't prepared for it. He doesn't have like walls all around his probes to make it harder for vulture drops to deal damage. He's forgetting to clog up his natural. And he's not reacting as quickly as some of the best Protoss players would. He's going to see this tank push coming across the map. He's got four Dragoons, so there's a possibility he snipes a couple tanks here and sandbags this push. 100% could happen. He's going to run forward now. He's got even more than four Dragoons, so he's actually going to snipe a couple of tanks pretty quick. All right, two tanks get killed. Three tanks go down. Gonna get a fourth one. Looks like he will not. Three tanks for about six Dragoons. It's not the greatest trade in the world and it certainly doesn't buy much time. Gonna build a pylon here at the front. He's got some Dragoons. He's got a carrier with one interceptor. That's gonna be dealing damage quite slowly. But it will eventually start to pick things off. Meanwhile, probes are dying here in the main mineral line. Or the natural mineral mineral line, excuse me. A Reaver is going to come out here and gets a great shot. A fantastic hit from that Reaver. It does go down, but killing off two tanks there it was pretty big. Got to focus down the mines at the front. He's going to go after this tank here. In the back, some Goliaths are coming up. A lot of turrets are being made as well. Looks like he can't get on top of that tank. There's one more tank here in the back line, so he taps out. GG. Rich will lose this game, and Flash takes it away. Excellent drop play, guys. Sorry for all my commentary about uh, Protoss and Zerg during that drop, but this did really, really well. We can even go back and just take a look at it. See exactly how that went. And how many probes were killed. Let's take a look. At the actual extent of the damage. Because I think it was pretty darn severe. Here's that dropship coming in. We'll just take a little note here of the number of probes beforehand. 37 probes at the beginning of this attack. What if your probes going to go down immediately here in the natural? More going to follow in the main. A pretty good attempt to block. And that actually did quite well. But then the run by here uh, in the natural because he didn't close this uh, front entrance does a lot more damage. So 11 probes got killed. 11 probes is just a deathly amount of damage. It's pretty nasty. Where was the second drop here? Here it is. It comes in. Right as he's going across the map, he drops behind. That's like four more probes. Five. Well, it looks like he's paying attention somewhere else. So five more probes end up going down. He's way, way ahead. Flash once again with the big lead. This time, not botching the final attack, although it was close. Only two tanks in that final uh, group of units. It might have actually been okay to just start building pylons and stuff here at the front and wait for four carriers but that was a lot of turrets maybe he couldn't have cleared that after all so let's jump into game number three here we are with game number three now in october so the first two games were from september these two, uh, next three are going to be from october rich has switched over to another account it's deer going after that uh, Starcraft 2 pro gamers name. Deer. 
a uh, pretty big player if I remember correctly. I haven't watched StarCraft 2 for an insane amount of time. It's been like, I would say like a solid six years since I really watched StarCraft 2. And I was a big fan of StarCraft 2 when it first came out. Um, back in the first few seasons of GSL, like Wings of Liberty, I watched every single game, uh, similar to how I do with the SSL nowadays uh, and the ASL. I've seen every game in the ASL, by the way, guys. Every single one. Never missed a season, never missed a game. Uh, sometimes I skip through a little bit uh, to get to the action in some of these games, like uh, especially TVT, sometimes PvP. But I am, like you guys, a big, big fan of this game, and the pro scene has always been fascinating to me. Uh, not as much of a fan of SC2, though, however, and the way that it went post Wings of Liberty. Uh, I found a lot of those games to be pretty boring and I kind of, I, I just, yeah, I lost interest. And once you start to lose interest, you know how it is. Uh, you kind of fall behind on what's going on. You fall behind on, you know, who's the stronger players, who is dominating, what's the latest strategies. Once you lose a connection to all of that, and I kind of lost a connection as well when I stopped playing uh, in, Wings, uh, in uh, Heart of the Swarm. So, uh, it's just not, it's not quite as fun anymore. It's not quite as interesting, and Brood War has always been so fascinating. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to, to keep up with both. When you're so busy with Brood War, there's, there's really no, there's no real reason. No real reason to keep up with StarCraft 2 as well. We've got a Vulture Expand here coming out of flash this probe somehow gets by i think we're gonna see some pressure but a cannon is on the way one gate into forge here after the nexus first from rich marines are gonna come across the map is he gonna drop a machine shop it's here machine shop on the way i'm very curious to see if he tries to just kill i've seen flash do this before where he will build bunkers and then he will siege tank push you into your natural. I'm not sure if that's what's going to happen here, but it looks to me like that's what's coming. Although we don't have that a uh, big amount of gas just yet in order to get the siege mode. I think the fact that we're still mining gas right now means that there's not going to be a CC on the way. And so we can expect a tank push second cannon is up already here for rich i think he kind of knows what's coming and so what he needs to do is just get more gateway units out he's gonna have that second gate a third gate is a perfect response rich is going to hold this most likely that's a lot of scvs he's pulling the boys this is a very late Nexus bust for a Nexus first. Really hard to pull something like this off, but he's going for it. Second siege tank is on the way. I imagine we'll probably just rally vultures after this, but I'm not sure how this build exactly goes. All the SCVs here coming to the front. They're going to be great for body blocking these zealots, keeping them off the tank. Here comes siege mode finishing up. Will he try to dive on this? Probes have been pulled. They're no longer mining. Three dragoons on the way. First cannon is about to fall. Gonna unseize this tank and inch forward here. Kind of a dangerous proposition because these dragoons can dive upon this. He's gonna go for the repair rather than the block. It's gonna help to block. And keep this tank alive. Great surround on that tank. The Zealots are just going to melt. And now the tank can start to hit this Photon Cannon. I think Flash has done it. Wow, this this actually reminds me, if you guys remember from the Wings of Liberty days, the, uh, the Thor push. You guys remember that? 
go ahead and just surround the uh, Thor with SCVs and just try to push in for the win. Doesn't it remind you of that a little bit? His tanks here are going to be behind a nice little wall. Tidy little wall here at the front. Missile turret bunker going to be blocking for them. He goes for the kill on one of these tanks, but GG is called Rich Taps Out. A very cool build here from Flash. Let's take a look at that one more time. It's really the scariest moment is moving this tank forward because you know he's going to dive on that, but watch how quickly he moves his SCVs to surround this tank. He gets the SCVs right up in the front there. Rather than blocking for the Marines, the Marines really don't matter uh, too much right now. The Marines are just going to be adding on the DPS, killing off these Zealots and uh, fighting with the probes as well. But the tank is all important. We have to keep this tank alive. So body blocking, not body blocking the drag goods from getting in range. Instead, surrounding the tank, getting the repair off. I don't know how many SCVs it takes to repair through two dragons shooting, but this amount will definitely repair through one dragoon shooting. That is so many SCVs here on that tank. Five SCVs, and you can see the probes can't even can't even touch it. The zealots can't touch it either. I think we've got like one probe hitting the uh, SCV here. The zealots are hitting the marines, but yeah, you just you can't you can't kill this tank. That is so funny. It really does look like uh, the Thor uh, from Wings of Liberty. He's oh he's hitting it. Look at that. The probe actually hits the tank there one time. You got this probe. Get him. He hits him again. He hits him again, but of course, the repair is good. All the zealots get cleaned up, and he manages to push that back. I think that might be the thumbnail right there. That is a slick build from Flash. So we've seen Flash two different ways here today of taking down a Nexus first player. Uh, how many times have you heard from Artosis and other... Uh, Terran players about how broken this build is. Well, all we needed was Flash to come back into the meta and show us how it's done. How do you stop Nexus first? This man has the answer. It's either the long range bunker push with just a few Marines and SCVs or the tank push with the SCV surround on the tank. Pretty slick stuff. I love to see it. Hopefully we'll get more interesting. Uh, or we'll, we'll see more people copy this type of build because I want to see how Prodos, Prodos players can react to this as well. It seems strong, but how will someone like Snow try to defend a push like this is what I'm wondering to myself now. Let's jump into our next game and see if Rich is brave enough to attempt another Nexus first. Here we go, game number four. Rich, this time cross map. I should actually mention, uh, because I mentioned Artosis and other Terran players complaining about the Nexus first. What they really complain about is Nexus first cross spawn. And we haven't actually seen busts from Flash that beat the Nexus first cross spawn. It was always close spawns. And generally that's not too bad. Usually you can uh, even with the traditional way of beating Nexus first with the Vulture uh, and, you know, a big pull of SCVs. Kind of gun that down, fight that down. Uh, the cross map Nexus first is another monster. We've got a barracks here at the front. A lot of minerals being uh, held in reserve here for Rich. I think we are going to see that Nexus first. Okay, this is a good test. I like to see it. Um, possibly we're just going to get a gasless fast expand from Flash. I mean, I think that's the best option considering we are cross map here. We're also not going to scout first, which is generally the case when you're in cross map. I think just going for a gasless fax expand is going to be fine. Especially if Deer gets scared and does double gateway after the Nexus. Which he might do. He might do that because he's already lost a couple of games. 
due to losing the Nexus early. Let's see. Let's see what he pulls here. No second get gateway. Gas is on the way, but he will not be punished for this. Flash is dropping the gas as fast expand. And this is going to be a relatively even game. I think I give just a slight advantage. Okay, there's the second gateway. All right. So two gateway. I'd say this is completely even. Yeah, this is completely even in my mind. Uh, of course, again, not a TVP expert, but I think that this is uh, a moderate assessment, not a difficult assessment here. We have the cyber core coming up. We'll likely have a robo in just a moment. Unless he really wants to pump out goons and go for range right away. Try to put on pressure. We've got just the one goon coming here so far. He's got money for the robo for sure. I think he's going to put down the robo here. Yeah, there's the robo. Extra pylon at the front. And just going to delay that range for a little bit get rid of this scv and then we'll decide what to do very good stuff here for rich but again a extremely close game so far no real advantage going to either player got double factory everything looking very nice and standard here. No eBay just yet as he just saw the timing of the robo. He knows what to expect and when he can expect it. Unlikely that there's going to be any sort of DT play. And it's going to take some time before we have any sort of reaver coming across the map. And in this game, we're not even going to have reaver. Seems like Rich just wants to get a very quick third Nexus. So we're going to see like a six minute third Nexus uh, with two gateway observer coming out. Probably a third gateway added on shortly after this Nexus comes down. All very good stuff. This is the benefit of going for Nexus first. You can get this super quick third Nexus. Quick second Nexus leads into quick third Nexus leads into quick fourth Nexus. Of course, you could go for some sort of timing. You could get aggressive, but as long as the Terran player is just kind of sitting back. Kind of playing defensive. Look at this. He's building double Goliath right now. Goliath is a defensive unit. Uh, in the early game, you're not going to be pushing with this. This is going to slow down the uh, attack timing of Flash by quite a bit. Now, we didn't drop the third Nexus yet, which is slightly worrisome. He sees the the vultures out here on the map. We're past the six minute mark. He's actually just laying down pylons all over the place, making sure that he can spot for any sort of drop play coming in. I like that. But where is this third Nexus? A Stargate on the way, huh? Okay. Shuttle. We sent northward. Goons are just waiting for a drop to come in, but th there's no drop here. Flash is playing straight up. He's defending against any sort of reaver. And it looks like he wants to go into up mech. He's just going to be playing super defensive. Both players, in fact, playing super defensive. But I actually think this goes more in the favor of Flash. No aggressive expansions here. And so... Flash just sitting back and getting upgrades is actually going to pay off quite well. He's got the science facility coming. He'll be able to start be able to start his plus two really quick 
doesn't have a probe over at the third base just yet so that could be sniped he clears out that mine but still hasn't sent a probe he's just gonna go yeah he's just gonna go for it bunch of carriers coming out now i didn't see the scan i heard the scan but i didn't check to see what he saw and so we're gonna be in a, a little bit in the dark here for a moment Double ar double armory. Going for up mech style. This is kind of out of the, the normal meta right now, but it's actually going to work pretty well for a flash in this game. Because he'll be able to hit that very quick 2-1 timing, which is so good against a player who's going quick carrier. There's the scan right there. He sees it. I'm glad I caught that. Flash absolutely knows about this carrier play coming. He's going to start plus two, plus one. And he should be starting Karam boosters in a moment. Actually, he might have actually he's might have already finished Karam boosters. I think I saw that a little earlier in the production tab. So Karam boosters may already be done. We've got Goliath out. We have six tanks to push with. Not a huge gateway army thus far for rich but a pretty it's sizable that's a lot of zealots even though they don't have speed they can still be scary as we've seen in past games more vultures coming out here siege mode is not done wow no siege mode he really delayed that for a long time which is quite good for flash actually he's been able to slip out a lot of factories he's got all his upgrades coming you rarely ever see siege mode after plus two starts. Almost halfway done that upgrade, in fact. And we're just now getting into siege mode. Stargates are pumping away. We've got two carriers out now. And two more are on the way. Flash on six fact. I'm pumping out a lot of goliaths. Slowly pushing forward, laying mines everywhere. Let's just see if he can get some free damage here. With Rich just kind of running around trying to clear out the map. Nothing here has been hurt thus far. Everything is healthy for Rich. So he has a pretty strong standing army for the moment. We're now up to 10 tanks. With 11 and 12 about to pop. Four more Goliaths coming. And he will get back into tank production. So here we go. Ready to push across the map now. With that plus two timing. Can Flash break Rich on two base? Two base carrier. It's a pretty tough task. Not wasting any money on Nexus or extra probes. He's just only been making units this entire time and carriers. Area number... Three and four just popped out. And Flash is continuing to scan. Check and see what's going on on Rich's side of the map. Finally starts his third Nexus here. Is Flash ready to push now? Plus two. Finishing up as this push comes across the map. The carriers are here. Loading out their interceptors. Making them available for the first engagement. Hit stop position and keep these carriers moving now. You can see the interceptors are floating behind them. Helps them to eject out of the carriers all at the same time. Here we go. Going to take this fight now. Pretty good reaver shots here. The shuttle is in a bit of a dangerous spot though. Not really being controlled. Here are the zealots coming to the forefront. Are we going to get a reaver shot? No. The reavers eat that damage from the tanks and get wiped out. The interceptors are almost all gone. Zealot slowly wandering to the front here, but the plus two upgrade is a little bit too strong. Wait, the Zealots getting on top of some of these tanks and the Goliaths actually finishing off the last few remaining. And maybe with the Interceptors being reproduced, maybe he can push through and kill these last few tanks. No, pushed back is Rich. 
more tanks coming to the fore diving uh, onto this natural can he pick off this last couple of glides there's so few interceptors remaining here he's only got like four or five interceptors for all these carriers but they are replenishing and flash has been driven back three tanks remain and gg is called flash cannot make it work he cannot break rich here on his two base carrier he's about to get this third base online and he's about to have what six carriers in total there's five and there's six and it just gets two out of control after this point so flash decides to just tap out a little bit early surprised to see him do that there i thought maybe he could have continued on in this game given it his best shot but he felt like after that push failed just wasn't going to be possible to break rich rich pumping out just barely enough units to make that hold work really well played by him i'm surprised he held that uh with no sell at speed and so few carriers he just had the four with limited interceptors and i mean the plus two upgrade on those goliaths were ripping the interceptors down so quickly i don't know if that was a botched engage by flash or what we can go back and take a quick look at it because everything came down to this right flash waited so long for this timing to come into play he brought scvs along with this he's got the rallies of vault of goliaths he made sure that rich wasn't behind him like one of the ways you can deal with an attack like this is you bring a bunch of dragoons around the back and cut off goliath reinforcements he w made sure that that didn't happen by laying down mines everywhere so the the ideas were very very good here by flash but let's just take one more look at this engagement rich goes ahead and targets one tank down the reavers get no shots And here they drop out once again and they really don't do much look at this the two reavers they get one shot off on a few of these tanks okay that was a pretty decent shot the zealots kind of wandering in between these dragoons slowly trickling through the army maybe the tanks not targeting dragoons here was the big problem he's targeting these zealots and the zealots are standing right on top of some of these goliaths look at how many tanks are targeting this one zealot right here one two three four five six tanks targeting that zealot let's see if this the tanks target the zealots here as well they do and so deal a lot of damage to the dragoons and tanks of the front line zealots still trickling through he's just really getting the zealot number coming here doing a great job of just keeping those zealots uh, in the production tab and rallied to the front gets right on top of these tanks and then yeah he just barely pushes this back you can see there's only like four four or five interceptors for four carriers but the ground army really carried the day here in the end just maybe not enough vultures in the mix maybe too many goliaths for the the moment in the game because it seemed like the carriers were completely nullified by all the plus two goliaths like the interceptors were killed so easily but then the zealots were able to get in and really get their damage done and if you have a lot more vultures in a play like that you're going to be able to oh wait what are all these vultures doing? maybe that was another rally he switched into vulture production he didn't forget those vultures behind did he certainly not no i don't think he did i think he started a round of vultures here to to reinforce his attack as he's coming forward look at how many vultures there are there are quite a few let's see if the reaver get okay the reavers did get one or two shots here killing off a few vultures but the vultures do end up losing their lives pretty darn quickly maybe had we kept the vultures in the back line to be used a little bit more handily against these zealots you can see they're kind of getting lit up here at the front and so 
the the vultures are pretty much gone at this point and there's still so many zealots left over and this is what i was talking about earlier how just small just tiny little mistakes like this can allow a tear or can allow a protoss player to come back in a game um yeah this is this is rough i really felt like the the overall theory of flash was extremely good this game uh he handled everything well he did he, he really crossed all the eyes here he prepared well making sure that he had mines everywhere uh to prevent a run by of dragoons from cutting off his reinforcements but the fight just went a little bit too poorly and staying on two two base t turned out to be the right call turned out to be the exact right call from rich just keep those gateways pumping no matter what make sure that he's got the supply to deal with this push and then he will be okay a few more vultures arrived on the backside but the damage had already been done the zealots are on top of everything and yeah that's all she wrote wow rich handling flash in a series like this beating him several times i'm not sure exactly the score right now but we're going to jump into game number five i think it's two two actually if i remember correctly we're going to jump into game number five it doesn't really matter it's a it's a uh ladder series anyway guys so don't get too hung up on the score overall these two guys just practicing against each other and i i I really do think that Flash has been solid. It's not like he's been doing anything totally clownish or completely experimental. I think it's been just really solid engagements from Rich and kind of poor engagements from Flash that have been turning the tides in some of these games. If he cleans up that one aspect of his play, I mean, he's going to be as frightening as he ever was in 2009. Let's go ahead and see what Flash can bring out for game number five. All right, here we are in game number five. Let me know in the comments down below if you've enjoyed this series so far. I think my favorite part of the series was the Thor push from Flash we saw earlier. You know he played in Wings of Liberty back in the day. Those were some good times, boys. Those were some times when there was still hope alive uh, for Blizzard Entertainment when we still had some uh some good feelings for that company and some hope for the future that maybe like a starcraft 3 could someday come out now i i i just doubt it i i really do doubt it and i actually fear it slightly i feel like blizzard today if they pulled out a starcraft 3 would just massacre the genre even further even more than it's already been you know terrorized a starcraft 3 would probably do more harm than good um i definitely didn't think that way like a couple of years ago but watching what happened with uh, diablo 4 watching what happened with overwatch 2 ugh, ugh, imagine a starcraft 3 today I mean, I've already heard that there's going to be a StarCraft first-person shooter coming soon. We all we all heard that story before. That's that's been a funny. Ooh, yeah, that's a that's a knee slapper. But um, <laughs> I mean, just don't. It's my message. It's the same message that uh, <laughs> they they give to to uh, Iran. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> Guys, you guys know what I'm talking about. Well, before I get too deep in the weeds of political commentary, let's go ahead and take a look at this game. We've got Flash opening with a factory, taking all of his SCVs off the gas. It's something that I've seen a few Terran players do, but mostly this guy. The optimization king flash is going to make sure that he ekes out every little mineral to make sure that he has the cc as quickly as humanly possible and there it is three minute and 14 seconds his cc can start 
We will get back into gas here shortly. But just while opting for a vulture expand, you don't really need that much gas to get this vulture expand. And of course, you will have the bunker started here at the front. All mineral intensive stuff, so doesn't need the gas just yet. Here comes the machine shop. That's enough gas for that, and so the build lines up quite nicely here. An SCV got in and saw the spinning cybernetic score. So he has that information at least. Single marine in the bunker, plus we've got the barracks here on the side. He comes in forward. I think he was able to see the CC there. Maybe? I don't know. I'm not sure if the vision was the vision range was good enough. I think he did though. You can see the blackness here. I think he was able to see that. And so he will confirm the CC. He has singularity charge almost complete. Single vulture kind of wandering around. He's waiting for mines to finish. I doubt he'll send it into the natural. Because suiciding this vulture is pretty bad. You really want to be able to drop uh, mines around the Protoss base, uh, potentially at these other expansion locations to give yourself that extra information. Ooh. Dragoon here. Spotted by the Vulture. Vulture going to loop around. Getting a mine here is nice. And we'll lay that down. Just setting up some problems here for his opponent, opponent Rich to deal with. Not going to come up on this high ground. He would probably get trapped and killed if he tried. Okay, he is going to go for it. This is a little bit scary. Because that mine can get targeted. And this mine can get targeted. And then this vulture can be killed. Very nice control there overall by Rich. Handling that vulture and getting rid of two mines at the same time. That means the only thing that this vulture was good for was putting pressure on the map and putting one vulture or one mine here. That is it. That's all it accomplished with its 75 minerals investment plus the build time of the factory. A little bit rough here for Flash and he's going to send out two more vultures. Let's see if they can do a little bit better than the first two. I'm a little worried for Flash. In every game he's played against Rich so far, if he's been... Uh, at an even standpoint at this point in the game, he hasn't done well against Rich. He's struggled to close games, uh, even with an advantage. So let's see if he can close a game here. Maybe he can get that advantage now. Gets one probe, two probe. Or was that just one? I think that was only... Yeah, just one because this one got hurt. Oh no, this is the scouting probe for sure. Hmm. That's rough. Barely getting any probe damage here. And so... Three vultures have been wasted. Four vultures have been thrown away for... A, a mine at a potential fourth base. And one or two probes. Not looking good so far. Flash is having a hard time. What's he going to follow this up with? Another factory on the way? I think he's going to go for an expand build this game. I don't know if he's going to try an all-in from this spot. Feels a little rough to go all-in after throwing away a bunch of vultures and not dealing any damage. Vultures could have been really useful in a push later on. And so maybe extending the game out a little bit longer might be a good plan, but hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Flash is going to six-fact. Let's see how this goes. He's got... Five tanks already. Here comes Deer with the Observer. He's going to come in. He sees the five fact. Does lose the Observer, unfortunately. He doesn't see the sixth fact either. But I think he's going to be well prepared for what's to come. Another Vulture loses its life for free. Man, he has been very cost inefficient with the Vultures today. Flash spamming way at 400 APM, but I mean, some of the games he was, I, I can't say today, this game, he was very cost inefficient. Some of the other 
games with the drops and stuff. He was very cost efficient with those. Here we come with the vulture towards the natural. I think it's almost time to it might be time to give up. I know it's not maybe the right thing to do. Just give up on getting damage with these vultures. I know that sharp would uh, continue non-stop to try and get vulture damage wherever he could but i feel like if you're going for a six factory play like this at some point you have to stop so that you have vultures remaining to help you with this attack he's only got four vultures with this push and so i'm a little worried whether he can make this work it's a very nice push location trying to dislodge Terran from this spot is insanely hard uh, but Flash pushed up a little bit too fast here. Oh man, the Zelts are going to get right up on top of these front tanks immediately. And dude, the tanks in the back are not doing anything right now. He's going to back up. We'll take the trade here. But the Dragoons fall back right away. This is a pretty bad start to this attack from Flash. Uh, okay, this is pretty good though. Getting in with the Vultures. Although, the vultures will get cleaned. And we've got some shuttles out now. Oh, I'm a little bit worried about this. We don't have any dragoons here uh, in the natural. And so, he's just going to have to pull the probes. I think we go for the bus, though. We should be having this uh, shuttle come through. Dropping zealots on top of these tanks as the dragoons come up to flank it. Let's see, here he comes. Gonna drop these zealots out in the front. Here we go, dropping right on top. He only gets two of the vault of the zealots out though. There's the double floating building with the six fact. This signature move here from Flash. This ominously floating towards his Protoss opponent. And it looks like this time it's actually going to work. Flash is so solid in this position right now i just don't think the rich can break through and he can't gg is called flash wins this final game breaking the tie here the six fact works this time it actually works and flash is successful a lot of money in the bank though at the end i think that might have been from some uh, of the the units being refunded out of the gateway but let's see this was a little bit lackluster from flash he left two tanks back here maybe this is for uh flank but you really don't want to run this close with your tanks uh before sieging up and he wasn't able to let's slow this down he wasn't able to siege up the rest and the tanks here at the back were not firing during any of this fight and so uh maybe the dragoons getting clumped up Coming around this corner gave him a slightly better trade, but look at how many dragoons are still left over, and we just lost a few tanks at the front, plus all the vultures. If we had Rich split half his dragoons, I think, and just, you know, go back into this little corner here, this game could have turned out a lot different, I feel. Flash got in some trouble or Flash got in a good position and Rich got in some trouble when these Zel or when these vultures were able to run by. If there were five dragoons here, these vultures just die and all the zealots that are popping out now survive. You can just kind of back up, kill the vultures as they're coming in and back out of range of these uh these tanks here. And we lose a bunch of vulture or lose a bunch of zealots. Uh, then we're forced to pull the probes. A lot of money in the bank right now. A, a thousand minerals in the bank means there must have been a, a bit of a mistake when it comes to uh, his macro during this. He doesn't have a reaver either. And so he's super reliant on the, the gateway rally. Really important that he keeps those rallies coming non-stop. Another big mine connection on a bunch of zealots means they're going to be much weaker for this next push and again more mines being laid down if he had five dragoons right here clearing out vultures as they're coming in you have to pull these tanks and move them even closer which makes it easier to dive upon this 
as it's coming into the natural he's not even hitting these this nexus yet there's not a really big onus on rich to pull the trigger on this attack the only thing that's really pressuring him is the fact that vultures keep running in and denying his mining if he had again a few dragoons here on the right hand side picking off vultures as they're coming in i think he could have handled this much much better but good on flash for making this work i really love the floating buildings over this attack i think that so many terror players you're gonna see doing this soon it's it's really strong and it's like i said ominous it it has like a fear factor to it as you're floating the buildings forward um and sometimes the the dragoons just start hitting them if the protoss messes up at all if they're like hitting a macro around uh while a moving all of their stuff the dragoons might just hit buildings floating in the air and waste a whole bunch of their dps that should have been on these tanks interesting matchup here between these two i felt like it was very very even some things that flash has to work on for sure rich exposing some of the weaknesses in his play i'm sure we'll see flash quickly closing up those holes though thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed this cast if you did make sure to leave a like comment let me know what was your favorite part about this series and i'll see you in the next one